Hey guys, Miss Vicente here to show you how we are going to create our Jim Dine inspired hearts. We're going to create emphasis by using size and color and line to make our hearts really stand out. Now here's what you're going to need. A pencil, a sharpie or any black marker, an eraser and some crayons. Now let's go ahead and get started. A blank white piece of paper is going to work best for this and right now I'm going to flip it over to the back because sometimes when we're drawing a heart, it helps to practice a little bit. So I'm just on the back side of my paper and I am going to practice drawing some hearts, some small ones, just figure out what works best for me. Now something that I know that helps others is to draw the letter V and then just add two bumps on top like this. So if you do have trouble drawing hearts, you could always try that or just do it any way that works best for you. But I think I know what I'm doing, so I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to make sure that I draw my heart somewhere in the center of my paper, nice and big, because remember, this is my emphasis and I want it to draw the attention of the viewer. So here is my big heart in the center of my paper, just like that. Now the next step is gonna to be to draw five lines from the heart to the edge of the paper. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Now notice that I spread them far apart. You don't want them to be close together because you need to have spaces in between. So one, two, three, four, and five spaces is where you will draw your patterns. Now for my first pattern, I'm just going to draw a bunch of spirals. So you might be thinking, well, pattern, isn't that supposed to be like square, triangle, circle, square, triangle, circle? It can be, but in art, it can also just mean that it's repetitious, right? So I'm drawing spirals over and over again till I fill up this entire section of my background. Now for my next section, I'm gonna do waves. So it's just a curved line up and over, repeating that over and over and over again. So there's that repetition or that pattern again. And I'm gonna do this for that entire section. All right, now next I'm gonna do kind of like a rainbow shape where it's just this arch with little arches in the middle. And I'm gonna make some big and some small but again, I'm just gonna keep doing this until I fill up the entire section. So remember, you don't have to use the same patterns that I did. You can do zigzags or checkers, whatever you want to do in your sections. And I've even attached in the assignment some examples of patterns that you could use. However, if you do like some of the patterns that I've done, feel free to try them out on your artwork as well. To do the slime, all you're gonna do is these slow curves up and down. So see, I go down, round it, up, round that line, down, round it, and back up. Now, I don't always make my drips the same length. Some are short drips and some are very long drips. Some are fatter and some are skinnier, but you're just continuing that wave down and then that wave back up. You don't have to do the slime, but if you wanted to, this is what that pattern looks like. And for my last one, I am going to be repeating shape. So I'm gonna do a bunch of triangles, different sizes, different directions, but I'm gonna just keep going, drawing these triangles until I fill up this entire section. And all that is, is literally what it sounds like. <laughs> bunch a bunch of triangles over and over, just facing different directions until you fill up this entire space. Now an important step of making your artwork stand out is to outline it with Sharpie. Again, if you don't have Sharpie, you can just use a black marker. If you don't have black markers, then use a black crown or a black, a black colored pencil. But you're gonna outline your heart Make sure you outline those lines that you drew to help separate your sections. And then I'm going to quickly outline my background. Poof, there we go. 
Ta-da! So that is all done. Now, definitely another very important step is to erase all of those pencil lines because that's what outlining is all about. You are tracing over the lines that you want to keep. So you're going to erase the lines that you do not need anymore. So I'm going to take my eraser and make sure that I erase my pencil lines as best as I can. I know they don't always come out all of the way, but I just try my best to get out as much as I can. All right, there we go. Got it all out and the erasing is finished. So now all we are gonna do is color. And when we're coloring, remember you're gonna grab those crayons and you are picking either the cool or the warm colors. You're not gonna use both, pick either cool or warm. So because I already did cool in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and do the warm so you can see what that looks like too. As always, remember if you don't have crayons, you can use markers or color pencils. But remember the only part that should be colored is the heart because the heart is our point of emphasis that is the center of attention in our artwork. Now, when I blend the colors together, like I did in my example, what I do is I pick the lightest color to start with. So I'm gonna take this yellow and color in the middle of my heart. Now, you don't have to... Ugh. And that's okay, I can use it anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and break that off, okay, or <laughs> keep coloring in the center of my heart. And notice I'm not really making sure I go all the way to the edges. That's because I'm going to blend colors together. So I'm finished with the yellow and I'm gonna grab a light orange because light orange will blend into yellow a lot better than a dark orange. And I am just going to color around the yellow, but also making sure that I overlap the yellow a little bit too. That's how it's going to blend in there. So I am just gonna keep going all the way around, blending into the yellow. And when I'm finished using this light orange, I'm gonna grab the next darkest color, which would be a darker orange. So here's my dark orange and I am just going to keep doing that same step over and over where I get closer to the edge, but I also overlap the colors that I've already done. Now you don't have to do this. You can just color a pattern in your heart or color in a design in the heart. As long as you're using either warm or cool colors, I totally don't mind. But if you wanted to know how I blended my colors in my example, this is how you would do it. Notice I color in both directions, so I colored diagonally, and then I turned my paper a little bit so I can color the other diagonal. And I also grabbed my yellow again just to blend, 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 baby, blend these colors together. The more you blend, and by blend I mean just keep coloring over and over, the better that blend is gonna look. So now I grabbed my darkest red, which is just regular red, and I'm gonna go around the edges, make sure I didn't leave any white around the edges, and also overlap the colors that I already have. Congratulations, you are done. So we have created emphasis, just like Jim Dine, by creating a heart that is in the middle of our paper being the biggest thing in our paper and being the only thing that has color. Also thanks to these lines that help direct our attention to the heart in the middle. So go ahead and create your own when you're finished, take a picture and upload it into Google Classroom. Good job, see you soon.